It has been almost three years since this 980 Ti graphics card has been released into the wild. It was released on June 2nd in 2015, came in with an MSRP of 650 US, and three years later, we still have the 1070s and 10 series 1080 Ti's and cards that have kind of stagnated in terms of GPU development, though that's probably soon to change with either the 11 or the 20 series cards, but regardless, I picked this card up for quite a bargain. Under 300 US, I got it for 350 Australian dollars. So I do recommend if these cards are cheap enough, you might want to get one because today we're going to be cleaning this card up. We're going to be giving it some tech, yes, loving, and we're going to be comparing it against the 1070 Ti. Now it's a little bit different because we're going to be putting it in my favorite setup of all time, X58. And we're going to be using the six core i7 980X. Now you're probably wondering, damn, these chips are expensive. And yes, they are. I do recommend getting the Xeon variants. That's the X5660s or X5670s, or my favorite, the X5675, for a lot cheaper than this. But since I did get this for basically nothing with uh, GTX 690s that I picked up in a previous used parts deal, if you want to check that out, I'll put it up here. I'm going to use it today and, of course, put this 980 Ti to the test and see how it does fare against that brand new 1070 Ti that was released late last year and came in with an MSRP of 449 but of course the mining and the crypto boom made it more expensive but lately it's come down in price so you may be able to pick them up near retail but regardless let's see how this used price performance compares. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and of course, we've got the graphics card here. It does need a bit of a touch-up. Of course, we're gonna give it a bit of brake cleaner, a bit of an alcohol wiping down to get rid of that thermal paste, and also some WD-40, and now my new favorite thermal paste, the Gelid GC Extreme. So let's get on to essentially restoring this and giving this graphics card some Tech Yes lovin'. So there's the graphics card there, it is looking beautiful, but we've also got the cooler. This is Cooler Masters 620p cooler. Now for some reason, I don't know why this thing is not available in the US because it's actually very solid value for money, but also looks really cool too. It's got that RGB bling, two fans, massive, and it does, most importantly, do a good job of cooling down your CPU. So with all that aside, let's put this rig together and see what we've got on our hands after we finish it off. So now this PC is complete. We haven't fired it up just yet, but what we've got in here is two brand new drives, a 120 gigabyte SSD and also a one terabyte hard drive from Seagate. Putting new drives in a build is always one way to make it very contemporary, make it very fast, because in this case, your old drives could slow down and they could be actually a detriment to this old X58 motherboard here. Now the X58 motherboard with DDR3 memory and a six core 12 threaded CPU, this thing just performs really well. I've recently tested it out in a video comparing it even against the 8700K with the 1080 Ti and it did really well. So now we've got the 980 Ti in here, also this deal hunted PC case and 1200 watt power supply. And of course we've got this brand new Cooler Master Cooler which does take the CPU up to 4.5 gigahertz. Let's fire this thing up now and see how it'll perform in some of the latest and greatest times.
So it's now the morning after and I finished benchmarking the 980 Ti versus the 1070 Ti. And really in games, there isn't a whole lot of difference. I mean, we pull up GTA 5 here, 1440p, very high settings, also turned on anti-aliasing. And there's only really a few frames difference in this game. Final Fantasy 15 as well. This was a game that the uh, 1070 Ti did score a victory in, uh, but it was uh, a little bit better on the 0.1% lows too in this game. Then we move over to PUBG at 1440p again. Not a whole lot of a difference in the frame rates. And then the last game, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Again, only a few frames. So this card here, if you can pick it up on a bargain, especially for what I got it for, which was 350 Australian dollars, which is like 280 USD, then it's a very good buy. It's coming in a lot cheaper than a 1070 Ti, but it is performing virtually the same. Of course, power consumption was a little bit higher. We're scoring 560 watts from the wall with this whole configuration with the i7-980X overclocked and the GTX 980 Ti overclocked uh, versus the 1070 Ti overclocked with the same CPU, we're getting 490 watts. So there was a difference of 70 watts from the wall when they were both overclocked. And also the interesting thing is I decided to test the i7-980X overclocked and then non-overclocked as well as the GPU non-overclocked. And the difference was 450 watts versus 560 watts. So we're using up 110 watts extra with the 980 Ti and the CPU overclocked. And that was about an extra 25% performance boost on the CPU side of things. And the GPU side, we got an extra 10% out of that as well. Uh, the idle power consumption figures were also pretty interesting as well. 135 watts idle uh, versus 185 watts idle. So the X58, when you do overclock it, it does ramp up those idle power consumption figures. But of course, when it all comes down to it, the 980 Ti is still a fantastic buy three years later and it's still performing really well at 1440p. If you drop the settings down to high, you'll get an even smoother experience. Uh, in some of the games, I didn't see anywhere near the six gigabytes VRAM buffer. I think PUBG, we got 4.2 gigabytes of usage. Kingdom Come Deliverance, 2.6 gigabytes. GTA 5, I saw it go up to a 3.9 gigabytes. And then Final Fantasy 15 was 3.8 gigabytes. So we still got a little bit of room left in the tank with the 980 Ti, of course, the 1070 Ti does have eight gigabytes, uh, so it would be considered a little bit more future-proof, but as I've argued in the past, when you start utilizing more VRAM, the frames drop anyway, because the GPU itself is generally having to work harder than it otherwise would if you weren't putting those taxing settings on that usually use up a lot of VRAM and also stress the GPU itself. Also, one cool little thing about the PC behind me was that when we changed from the X5675, which I did a recent video on, we got that to 4.5 gigahertz. Now, the exact same settings in the BIOS, because uh, it remembers those settings, when I put the i7-980X in, I could only get out to 4.4 gigahertz at those same settings. So perhaps there is a little bit of truth behind those Xeons being better bins even to the i7 like best counterpart, which was the 980X. Of course, it is only one sample versus one sample, but from what I hear from a lot of other people who have those X5675 Xeons, they do do a really good job when it comes to overclocking. Also, before I get on out of here as well, the temperatures in this case were phenomenal. So the actual airflow of the case itself is really good, especially for an older style case. We've got a push-pull configuration. Of course, it is a little bit loud. You can probably hear it when it's switched on now that it is quite loud, but there's also some inserts in the side panel that allow the GPU to suck in air as well and breathe. So it's a really cool design, and we saw this with the GPU temperatures. The 980 Ti scored practically a max of 60 degrees even when overclocked, and this is a power-hungry card. This isn't the most massive solution I've seen either. The uh, 1070 Ti as well, that was scoring phenomenally well, even when overclocked. And that's, both of these have had that GC Gelid Extreme experience too for the thermal paste. But anyway guys, let me know in the comment section below, which do you think is a better buy at the moment, a 1070 Ti or a 980 Ti? And don't forget to hit that like button and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.